friends, it's Gloria and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be going through my historical fiction TBR for the month of November. If you missed it, there was an announcement for Historathon 3.0, which is a historical fiction readathon that I'm co-hosting in the month of November and there are a ton of fun challenges and prompts. I'll link the announcement video down below and up above. You can go watch that if you haven't already. But today I'm going to be going through those prompts and picking out my TBR, letting you know what nine books I hope to read in the month of November. I think I can do it. I read probably an average of 12 to 15 full-length novels every month at this point and so I think I can complete my nine and then also have room for nonfiction November of course. So without further ado let's get into the books. Prompt number one happens to be the group read which is The Lost Girls of Willowbrook by Ellen Marie Wiseman. So that is what I am planning on reading. This book is set in the 1970s in Staten Island, New York surrounding a mental health institution and how they were wrongfully treating the people that were there. I've yet to read an Ellen Marie Wiseman book so I'm excited to try this historical fiction author but I did want to mention that for whatever reason if you are not interested in reading this book or can't get your hands on it or have already read it and want to read something else there are a ton of other historical fiction books with Lost in the title. I'll link below in the description box the Storygraph Challenge if you are on Storygraph and I put a bunch of other book options for this. I think there are around like 28 books that I listed under this prompt that could work for you. You might have some of those on your shelves instead. But prompt number two is to read a book that is set in a different country than the previous book. So The Lost Girls of Willowbrook is set in Staten Island, New York City, USA. And I'm going to pick a book that the majority of it is set in Vienna, Austria. And that is The Only Woman in the Room by Marie Benedict, another author that I've been meaning to try. This book actually has two settings. The majority of it, like I mentioned, is in Austria. I did go through to make sure it was the majority. And then the last part is set in LA. But I picked this book specifically for the next prompt, which I'll mention in a second. This book follows a woman who's married to a Nazi officer and then eventually somehow becomes a Hollywood actress makes her way to LA I think. I'm very curious about Marie Benedict. I've heard she writes unlikable characters well which I'm curious to see how I'll fare with because I tend to not like books with unlikable characters because I need to care about the character in order for me to have any investment in the story so I'm very curious to see how Marie Benedict's writing works with me. Now the next prompt is to read a book with a similar cover to your previous book and for my next read I went with Hannah's War. Very similar covers. You have the woman with her face cut off, the lipstick, the pearls. So although the colors are a bit different, the vibe is very much the same. And Hannah's War has two time period in places. It is Berlin 1938 and New Mexico 1945, so also surrounding World War II. And this has to do with a woman scientist and I believe around the atomic bomb or creation of the atomic bomb. The next prompt is to read a book that is set in a different decade than the previous book. So again, with this one, it's the 1930s and 40s. So read a book that is in any other decade and I went pretty far. I went with The Red Tent by Anita Diamond. This is set somewhere between 1500 and 1800 BC and it is set in the Mesopotamia early Egypt region. This is technically a biblical fiction that follows the life of Dinah or Dina who is one of Jacob's daughters if you're at all familiar with the Old Testament and I think similarly to how The Book of Longings by Sue Mung Kidd touches on the female experience during Jesus's timeline, this book is going to touch on what life was like for for women during this time period and I believe the red tent is a place where women would go when they were menstruating every month because they were deemed unclean. I've heard that this is a love or hate it kind of book. I honestly don't think many people like love it sing its praises so I'm very curious how I'm gonna fare with it and whether or not I'm gonna enjoy my time. Next prompt is to read a book where the author's last name starts with the same letter as the previous book. So I have Anita Diamond, letter D, and I went with Fiona Davis. This is a historical fiction author that I've been really meaning to get to. I own three of her books, The Address, The Dollhouse, and The Chelsea Girls. And I just went with The Chelsea Girls because it's the first one of hers that I hauled. But I really could read any of those three. So if you've read from her and you know of those three books, let me know which of the three you'd most recommend. But what I know about Fiona Davis is that all of her books are set in New York and feature a main architectural building and the lives of the people in that building. So with The Chelsea Girls, it is The Chelsea Hotel. This is set in the 1950s. And so I'm excited Excited to finally try this author out. The next prompt is to read a book that is less pages than the previous book. So The Chelsea Girls was 352 pages and I went with Esperanza Rising by Pam Munoz Ryan and this is 262 pages. This is a middle grade historical fiction which I'm excited to throw in because it gives me a better chance of actually completing all of these. And this is all about Esperanza who is a young Hispanic girl living in Mexico and then her family is forced to flee to 
California. This is set during the Great Depression in California, I believe. I've heard only amazing things about this author and this book, so I'm really excited to try it out. The next prompt is to read a book where the main character is a different race than the previous book. So in Esperanza Rising, it is a main Hispanic character, and I went back to a main white character, and that is Joan by Catherine J. Chen. For whatever reason, this new release historical fiction has just been calling my name ever since I first heard about it on Coiny Reads channel when she talked about it and its gorgeous UK cover, which I think is stunning and much better than this one. So yeah, for whatever reason, Joan of Arc just really intrigues me. I know nothing about her except that she was a female warrior, maybe one of the youngest and first females to ever fight in a war. This book is set in 1412 when England and France are at war and she fights for the French army. And I'm just very curious how this is gonna go and to learn more about this historical figure. Prompt number eight is to read a book by an author who blurbed or reviewed the previous book. So I had many to choose from with Joan. There is Hilary Mantel, Lisa Wingate, Joe Baker, Fiona Davis, Alison Richman, and Alison Pataki, but I went with Christina Baker Klein, and the book of hers that I chose is The Exiles. She is most well known for her book The Orphan Train, which I actually read last year for Historathon and absolutely loved it, so I am excited to pick up another one of her books. And this one has to do with female prisoners who were sent from England to Australia and their story. The premise sounds very intriguing to me. I'm curious how it will be executed and if another one of Christina Baker Klein's books works really well for me, I'm hoping it will. And lastly, prompt number nine is to read a book that has the same number of letters in the title as the previous book. So with the Exile, I have nine letters. And so for my next and last read, I'm going with Send for Me by Lauren Fox. This is another World War II or maybe pre-war story about a Jewish family living in Germany. And it's a shorter one, only 250 pages. So excited about that. So those are all my picks. I'm gonna be honest, I don't love that I'm reading three books that have to do with World War II. I would happily swap one of these out for a different story, but I really just went with the books that are on my shelves. I do wanna read all of these books. And so having these prompts and this lens, looking at my shelves, these are the ones that I went with and chose. Luckily, they're at least in three different settings. So we have Germany and a Jewish family. We have a woman in the Nazi party and then maybe an actress and we have a woman in the US during the war. So different perspectives at least within that time frame. And then for the rest, I think I have a pretty good range. The 1400s, I have the 1950s, I have 1800 BC, 1840s Australia and Great Depression California. So I like that range and all the different kinds of settings and perspectives there. I think it's gonna be a fantastic historical fiction reading month, so I'm excited. So let me know down below in the comments what you think of my picks, if you've read any of them and have any thoughts to share. And if you've already picked your books, even if they're not nine books, what historical fiction are you planning to read in the month of November if you're joining in? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in another video soon. Bye!